Well, to discuss this, I'm joined by Mithat Rende from Iskenderun. He's a, the former Turkish ambassador to Qatar. And from Madrid, Salman Al Ansari, who's the founder and president of the Saudi American Public Relations Affairs Committee. Salman, Turkey is not just sending milk and eggs to Qatar, it's also sending troops and it's beefing up an airbase. Did the GCC countries, with the Saudi leading them, did they underestimate the type of support the Qataris were going to get from the likes of Turkey? Uh, basically, I think Saudi Arabia is wanting to give a signal to the world, specifically after the Riyadh summit, because we have to look at this case through the lens of the Riyadh summit, when more than 50 Muslim leaders uh, got together with the President of the United States and created a complete new strategy to combat terrorism and to combat all the funders of terrorism and all the people who advocate for terrorism. So let's speak about the facts before we get into this uh, uh, question, which is Qatar has been basically put in the sanctioned list. Some of the people, Qataris, have been put in the sanctioned list in the Treasury Department in 2013, and they still live in Qatar without any issue, as Subairi and Nuraimi. And uh, David Cohen, the, the, the Deputy Secretary of the Treasury Department, talked about this for so long. The only country in the GCC that was actually supporting Jabhat al-Nusra, which is affiliated to al-Qaeda in Syria, is Qatar. And the only country in the GCC that supports Fajr Libya militia in Libya is Qatar. And the only GCC country that supports all non-state actors in the region is Qatar. So those things need to be stopped. Those things need to be stopped because right now we have complete new dynamics in the, in the decision of combating terrorism or in the idea of combating terrorism. So Saudi Arabia has been so patient with Qatar for so long. When it comes to, to Turkey, I think the Turkish political fabric needs to understand that, that, that what the Qatari is doing is basically undermining the Turkish interest in the Middle East. It might sound surprising, but this okay. is the true fact. Okay. Because if you so go and see the, the, t the amount of propaganda that the Qataris are let's doing take that. by making Turkey to look like a caliphate, not as a democracy. So let's take a, that and ask thing. Sultan. Sure, okay, fair point. Let's take that. So Sultan Salman goes and, and he spelt out the Saudi perspective, right? There's a perspective there that Qatar is at the heart. Wherever you find trouble in the region, you'll find the fingerprints of Qatar. And he feels Turkey is being played by the Qataris. How do you see it? I, with all due respect to Salman, I think, um, and, I, I, and I must say here, I do not represent the Qatari official uh, line in any way. For every Qatari who has been linked to uh, uh, funding terrorism, there are at least 10 or 20 Saudis. And the whole uh, perspective of creating the JASTA law in the United States came originally to counter what was perceived as Saudi uh, funded uh, funded uh, terrorism. Now, put that aside, I think the real issue now is that the, the uh, Gulf states seem to have reached a particular deal with the uh, Trump administration. The Riyadh conference was key to this. They have all uh, simultaneously or separately pointed fingers to towards Qatar. My analysis is that there are deeper reasons for that that go beyond the uh, surface analysis around uh, terrorism at this stage. But if you like, we can discuss this at a later stage. Uh, well, the, tell, me, uh, tell me what's the deeper, sorry. tell me what that, that deeper reason is. If you had to tell me in, in a couple words, what is that deeper re reason? Well, I think the, the, uh, both Saudi Arabia and Emirates lack the stability the, internally that Qatar enjoys, which allows Qatar to see things in, in gray colors. They do not draw lines black and white. So when they talk about Islamic movements, they have the confidence to deal with a whole range of a rainbow, if you like, of colors of uh, political Islam. And they can very clearly, as does Turkey, and this is a very important point of, uh, of connection between the two, they can draw a clear distinction between uh, a global movement like the Muslim Brotherhood, which has millions of followers that you cannot by any sense call them terrorists, and a small fringe group like ISIL. Now, unfortunately, in the Emirates, they're incapable of doing this. They have labeled the whole millions of people who, uh, abscribe, uh, who follow the Muslim Brotherhood or believe in its principles and so on as terrorists. Mm -hmm. Now, this is not going to end terrorism in our region.
if anything, is going to make it worse and is going to lead us from one bad episode to a worse one to come. Okay, interesting points there. So, Salman, Turkey and Qatar see nuance. They see colors. They see variations in these movements. And maybe just to add to, to what Sultan was saying, you see in the UAE you can go to jail for 15 years if you just express solidarity, sympathy with Qatar during this latest diplomatic spat. It does add weight to his argument, right, that for the Saudis and the Emiratis in this particular context, they see things in black and white and you're with us or you're with the terrorists. He's right, isn't he? It's actually not like that at all. What I'm trying to say is terrorism should always be defined as terrorism. There is no gray area on this, and this should be respected by all the nations. If any nation decides to crack down all terrorist networks and all terrorist propagandists, then this should be actually clapped for, and we should be celebrating having those countries to be in the forefront of combating terrorism. The idea that Qatar in the past wanted to, 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 um, to make itself like the main conduit to non-state actors in the region and the world this is a failing, a failing card. You cannot play with that card. As why long not? you are actually... But, but why not? I mean, why when, not? I, beca be beca when I lived because, in Doha, I mean, you go to a five-star hotel, you'll see the Darfuri rebels negotiating with the government there. You see all sorts of different movements uh, having their meetings. Uh, Qatar saw itself as a sort of negotiating partner. Why not have some sort of conduit? Good. If you want to be a negotiating partner, let's keep it as it is. But if you go to the extra milestone and support terrorist groups with cash and weapons, mm -hmm. then there is a red line that this should not be crossed. And that's what the Qatari has been doing. It's not me saying this. It's right. not the Saudi is saying this. It's not the GCC. It's the whole world, specifically the United States. And there are reports about this, intelligence reports about this, of how Qatar has been actually using this Muslim Brotherhood kind of movement around the world to basically achieve its political ends by basically being uh, the main uh, Muslim Brotherhood supporters because they have some sort of like maybe expansionistic right. behaviors just like the radical Iranian regime. So let me just give you an example that can be understood by the Turkish people because Turkey is our friends and we appreciate our alliance with Turkey. But at the same time, there are things that they are not really seeing. What the Qatari is doing is exactly like what, what Fath, uh, uh, Golan, Fathallah Golan is doing uh, by having states within states by having groups within countries that would actually um, um, create some kind of chaotic situations for the governments. This should be confronted by okay. all means. We okay. cannot We've tolerate this. There is, no, there is no array of colors. Okay. This is a black and white okay. matter. If there is a terrorist, we will confront him by all means.